Hello, and welcome to Community Connections. My name is Addison Davis, Superintendent of Schools. This month on Community Connections, we'll speak to the recently released graduation rates from the Department of Education, along with the robust programs that we offer in our high schools from the Career Technical Educational Program. To help talk about these topics, I have the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction, Mr. Terry Connor, along with our supervisors of CTE, Mrs. Alice Polk and Mrs. Kelly Mosley. For the first time ever, Clay County High Schools have transitioned to the 90 percentile related to graduation rate. As we talk about graduation rates, and we see a, a number of uh, increases over the last uh, three years, you know, one of the biggest points that uh, we focused on, me, you, leaders, and, and, and our team, is to make certain that students are post-secondary ready. That was one of the elements that a couple of years ago that got restructured in the accountability system and the Department of Education removed from the accountability system. But I believe, under my, you know, through this leadership, and I, I know you agree and everyone agrees as well, that being post-secondary ready really, really is important to our kids so they can have future success within college or the workforce all through military. So that means that we really focused on having students prepared in literacy and mathematics related to ACT and SAT courses and some other um, avenues. Talk about how what we've seen with our growth and we really have some intense focus on that over the last three years. So sure, let me go ahead and define what college and career ready means. So what we do is we wanna make sure that students, when they enter college, they have everything they need to be successful, that they don't have to take remedial coursework. Uh, the opportunities that exist by being college and career ready are important as well. They have uh, financial implications. Students don't have to take unnecessary coursework or yeah. remedial coursework. They may even get scholarships based on their college readiness. So while the state doesn't hold us accountable to that any longer, we find it very important that we still focus on that. Sure. So when we look at college and career readiness, what we really mean is do, are our students meeting the requirements set by the state on certain assessments? That being ACT, SAT, and the PERT, which is our post-secondary education readiness test. So if a student can demonstrate by meeting a certain score in reading and math on those assessments, they're deemed college ready. Right. So we do a lot of, we have a lot of focus on that. Uh, through our ACT and SAT prep courses, we do uh, before and after school tutoring. Our principals have been very strategic in providing as many opportunities to get students to that cut score so that they can be deemed college ready. Because the implications for the student, like I said, are, are pretty, pretty extensive. So we want to make sure that they have the best success going forward into, into college. Right. And so, for, you know, what's great in the last two years is we've had some significant it's increases. Been, it's been crazy. So uh, last year we've had uh, roughly about 6 to 10% of our students have gone up. We're up in the 80s in reading. 80% of our That's graduates awesome. are now college and career ready. And about 67% of our students in math are college and career ready. So we're, we're excited about right. those numbers. It's a, a tremendous uh, increase over the last two years, historically. And so uh, we're going to continue to push that. Our college and career coaches have done an outstanding job yeah. in, in really creating. We've charged them to really create a college-going culture. Uh, and we know not every student is going to college, but we want them to have that as an option. I, I agree. It should be a mindset. Absolutely. Without so, a doubt. They're looking at colleges that they that could be potential places that they can apply for, um, and then we just really celebrate the fact that they've met those cut scores that they're college and career ready, and they get so many incentives along in their senior year that uh, it really helps kind of build that momentum for all students to right. to try to get college and career ready. So, so thank you, and uh, you know, I personally thank you for your leadership through the graduation rates yeah. increase in the last two years. You've been a significant part of that. That's something that you, you've owned with me and you've owned with leaders and you've done a great job. So thank you for your leadership and thank you for, for your time with, with that discussion point. Now transitioning to CTE, you know, CTE month here yes. and, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to celebrate the great programs that we offer in Clay County. And I have to first tell you, each of you, y'all have been truly models in this work. But as we seek to prepare, adequately prepare our students to, to compete in society and also in the global economy, what does career technical education mean? What role does it play with uh, with our with our students as we seek to prepare them to transition that in post secondary opportunities? Sure. So when we meet with business partners, um, they're always looking for quality employees. And you think a quality employee would be somebody who's like valedictorian from yeah. the school, which they'd love to have. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But they just want some basic things. They want a kid who can show up to work on time, or a young adult who can show up to work on time, who can work well with a team and can follow us in simple directions. And so to me, that encompasses everything we do in CTE with our project-based learning. 
Those kids have to work as a team. They've got to be able to follow some directions, and they've got to show up to work. Because when they don't show up to work or school that day, their team is missing out. Right. You, know, you take the example of maybe culinary arts programs, and you're serving lunch that day at your school, and your job is to plate appetizers. Well, if you don't show up or you don't show up late, then you've caused yeah. a problem with your whole team, and you're on a tight schedule to yeah. get people served yeah. and back Ownership. into classes. Yeah, so it's a. I feel like CTE embodies those basic skills with anything that we do. Um, another thing with career and technical education is we like for people to understand we are college and career, and that important word there is and. We like to think that our students don't have to make a choice. Right. Am I going to go to work or am I going to go to college or right. finish high school? We want to be able to show them the opportunities that they can do both of them. In fact, we I have agree. an Orange Park High School graduate from the carpentry program. He had done his NCCR testing, which is an entry certification, which we'll talk about. Yeah. And he went to work for Northeast Florida Builders, NEFBA. And through that, the high school company, he went into his apprenticeship with already a year of experience under his belt. Wow. And so he, he's already up the ladder there. He has been working um, it, while working. Haskell has also sent him back to school, the University of North Florida, to get wow. a business construction management degree. Wow. So this kid, Success student, is going to awesome. be barely 21, have a full-time job, have wow. a college degree without a penny of yeah, college debt, for. and probably make more than you and I make. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, no, good, good for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those are, those are, that's yeah. what we're doing for Northeast Florida. And we have a great support system of businesses and companies and corporations here in Northeast Florida who want to see us successful so that right. they can be successful. Right. And so they do invest. Right. So tremendous amount of investment from, from our part, community partners. They have been a, a, a great resource for our students to, to expose them to avenues they've never even thought about. So, you know, through internships, externships, apprenticeships, we're really getting our kids connected. You know, CTE pathways and academies are in every one of our high schools in Clay County. And I think that's a, you know, a special opportunity that affords the uh, beautiful pathway for our students. Can you talk about some of the, the highlights of any activities or anchor academies that, sure. um, that we're, we're really having to, to create a staple within Clay County? Sure. So every year we publish yeah. this book, um, our course selection guide, and I will awesome tell book. you, I will tell you we have never been able to copy and paste from year to year because yeah. we are always changing, always evaluating our programs and seeing what's needed in our schools and communities. Um, so parents of eighth graders, this is coming home at the end of February if you haven't seen it. Go digging through your child's backpack and look oh, for yeah. it because it, it came home with them towards the end of February. But it lays out for um, students and parents all of our programs at all of our high schools. Um, current technical education is kind of the big umbrella for everything is what we call it. And then within that, we have programs and academies. Right. Um, we have programs in 7th through 12th grade. So every junior high school, every high school, including uh, Bannerman Learning Center and Florida Youth Challenge. So we serve all of those students. Um, with those students, we have 120 teachers in all of our programs, and we have 36 distinct programs throughout our high schools and junior high schools. Um, we have, this coming year, 13 academies that will be at each high school. Each high school has at least one academy. Those are determined um, by lots of conversation with business, partner, to business partners, right. the administrative team, the teachers, and that business community, and the parents as part of that community. Of what do they need, and what are their, what's the skill set they are for those students in that community. So we have a number of things that are that are high um, needs for our Northeast Florida area as part of um, what we look for to, to offer. So we have things in like IT, information technology, health science, finance, and some of those areas. Um, our programs, so those are our academies, right. and then within our programs, I like to joke that we have everything from A to Z, but we don't have a Z, right. so we have everything from <laughs> agriculture to welding. If we yeah, have a Z, we have that. that. And so well, we, we can do, create something. Yeah, we could say zoology is yeah, maybe right. stretching <laughs> agriculture, but we do. We cover the gamut. We cover things that you think of um, as old school, maybe like trades, like carpentry and welding, and then we cover new things like cybersecurity and everything in between. Right. And so I like to think that we have a home you know, for everybody in our programs. Right. But through our academies, um, those students see a theme, hopefully see a theme for their academy throughout their school day. Right. It's a small learning community within a community. So, for example, criminal justice at Clay High School. Right. Those students, when they're reading a novel in English, they're not just reading a novel maybe that other English students are reading. They're reading something that maybe is almost along the lines of a murder mystery. Right. And so then they take that back to criminal justice, and they try to solve that mystery before they get to the end of the book. And sometimes they even play it out and lay it out. Yeah. Really cool. And so can't you imagine going to yeah. that language arts class right. versus maybe what you're traditionally right. sitting in? Same thing with something like culinary and math class. If you're talking about taking a recipe and doubling it or, or doing it for like 100 people versus four people at your home, putting those math skills together with the, the equations and figuring right. that out. So 
that's kind of the yeah. academy activities and how they pull them yeah. together. So I have to say the Clay High School Criminal Justice Program is fabulous. Yes. And uh, you just see the inquiry-based, project-based learning that's taking place. And uh, they do a great job. And thank you for what you do. You know, oftentimes I go to the community and I speak, you know, a lot at, um, a, you know, community functions, listen and learns with the superintendent. And I often hear about, you know, why, you know, do we, why do we not have more standalone vocational programs uh, for our students, such as HVAC, plumbing, welding, you know, electric, uh, you know, it, it, and I'm blown away the fact that our community may not be educated on the fact that we do offer these programs with, within our school district. So can you talk about what we offer from, from that perspective so that the community can have a better lens of what we're doing for our children? Yes, yeah, so we hear that all the time, all too. The time. And so yesterday's vocational education has evolved to today's career and technical education. And even though the name has changed, we are still serving a, a gamut of programs, as Alice has mentioned previously. Um, we have a lot in terms of our construction trades. So we have carpentry programs at five different high schools, at Clay High, Middleburg, Ridgeview, Keystone, as well as Orange Park High School. And so we also have HVAC at Ridgeview. We have welding at Orange Park High School. Um, we also have electrical wiring at Middleburg, and we offer drafting at Middleburg High School as well. And those students are highly, highly sought after. We cannot produce enough welding students out of Orange Park High School to There's meet the demand. There's a lot of money to be made, too. Absolutely. Lots of and money. so we have a lot of those students that are the construction industry wants to go to various apprenticeship programs, like the NEP apprenticeship program. And so our students, they know whenever they come out of a Clay County CTE construction trades program that they're going to be very prepared for that job. Um, we also have several automotive trades programs, and so we have those at um, – we have at Middleburg High School and Clay High and Orange Park, we have automotive technology. And also at Middleburg High School, we have the auto repair and collision. And so we have had a lot of interest this past year with those automotive programs. And so we have Garber Automall that came alongside us, and they've started an after-school program wow. where students can go um, every other week on Tuesday and Thursday nights. And they're getting manufacturer-specific credentials that they can put on their resume in addition Fabulous. to the ASC certifications. Um, we also have Ford Corporate that came in this year, and um, we're going to be piloting a program with them, the Automotive Career Excellence Program, where their dealerships actually sponsor all of our um, high school automotive programs, and then they are able to have access to the Ford curriculum. So potentially we have students that could get their uh, ASC yeah. certification, uh, GM and Ford um, manufacturers credential as well. So we have a lot of interest in our programs um, because they know the quality of students that's right. coming out of Clay County. Yeah, awesome. So community, if you're watching, uh, you know, I have to tell you, so many vocational programs that we have, they're just spread out, spread out through the entire community, so that we have accessibility and, and for all of our learners. So we just don't have that standalone site. So just it just provides you know a sense of care for our neighborhood communities. And they're doing a fabulous job with these offerings, having great partnership to make this a reality. You know, one of the things where we're, we're, you know, we've, we've moved toward with the state of Florida is making certain that we prepare our students for the workforce. And industry, industry certifications has, has allowed us to do that. So can you talk about what industry certifications are and how that help, helps our learners prepare for, for, for jobs they, you know, uh, aspire to uh, transition to? Sure, I love I love talking about industry certifications. Uh, I, love, I like the talk numbers. about some of the successes. Yes, I, mean, I love all the numbers yeah, and the numbers. I, I love that you love the numbers because it's been great in Clay County the last three years. So thank you. So when we started reporting these to the state in 2008, 2019, we had 123 certifications, and they wow. were mainly from health science and a handful of automotive, right. and that has grown to 2,225 <laughs> certifications can, last can, can year. Can you say that net number again? <laughs> 2,225 2, certifications. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so in 10 years, that's how much we've grown. Yeah. Um, and so industry certifications are not something that Clay County has created. We look for nationally-based assessments, and it, it's, there's a list approved by the Department of Education that is run through the Workforce Board right. to, deem, to deem them as appropriate for high school kids, that they're testing the right skills, and that there's something that our workforce is going to recognize and find right. usable and valuable. And so our students sit for a third-party exam. Some are um, housed at school, some are off-campus, depending on what they're doing. Some are practical tests, like our health science. They have a two-part where they take an actual written test, and they have a skills test where others are just simply um, a computer-based or project-based right. test. So they're, they vary depending on the testing agency. Um, but then the students can leave high school with those credentials. Um, and so 
industry certifications are win-win for everybody. They're win for the school, they're win for the student, they're win for the parents, everybody across the board. As a school, um, it plays into that acceleration rate, which is part of the school grade. And so the more industry certifications you have that help that acceleration rate, the higher the school grade can go. And so finally, CTE has a has a nice seat at the table when it comes to those things, which is which is huge for us. Um, for the students, um, I like to use the example when a student's going on to college and the parents as well as a, as a benefit. Some of our certifications are called what's gold standard certifications. Right. So the state as a whole has decided if you have this certification, it's going to equal right. this college credit. So we have some students uh -huh. who can walk into college with three hours of college credit awesome. or six hours because they took a test in high school yeah. and have that credential. Take advantage of it, students. Yes. If you're watching, yes, take advantage definitely. of that. definitely. And then another part of that, too, is we tell students it looks great on their resumes and it's their applying Absolutely. for colleges. If you want to get into a pre-med program and you can show that you were part of a health science program in high school and you have this certification, right. that's going to show some discipline and some intentional um, outcomes for you when right. you're applying to a yeah, program. And on the other side, for creative arts, if you have somebody who's done something in the Adobe products and they're applying to maybe an art school that's hard to get into and they can say, I have my Photoshop certification or InDesign, that's, got, that's right. going to stand out to those people. Right. So. Yeah, so awesome. Thank you. Energy certifications, uh, teachers, if you're out there, you're doing a great job with our students, allowing them to have greater success and they continue to brew competence through their assessments in the, in the last three years that, I, that I've been here. So thank you so very much. You know, one of the things that we've, uh, we've done, we've transitioned some employees to become college and career coaches. And it's, they have been truly instrumental with looking at academic histories, with looking at uh, helping students uh, to find the, the right pathway, and then allow them to, to fulfill their aspirations as they go and transition outside of Clay County District Schools. So what do those individuals do in our schools and uh, you know, how they've been really instrumental in this work? So our college and career coaches, they work very closely with their school guidance uh, team and their administration team. And they look at all the graduating seniors, but they actually start when they're in freshman, sophomore years right. to track those students who might be at risk and then see what kind of supports need to be put in place to get those students across the finish line. Um, in addition to their efforts with the grad tracker piece, they also are basically like the bridge between our office, because right. um, there's a couple of us, <laughs> and there's 120 there's teachers. There's you too, right. 120 there's, teachers, thank right, you for what exactly. you do. <laughs> and 120 teachers across the district, so we're very blessed in Clay County to have that position where they can be that bridge between us and those students, right. CTE teacher students. And they, um, they implement a lot of the programs that right. we offer, such as field trips, they handle all of those yeah. things, um, internship programs, the career shadowing. We'll have about uh, 240 students that go out on career shadowing during March. And so they um, recruit those students and process their applications and all those kind of things. And so they are just really instrumental in implementing a lot of the programs that we offer to our students in Career Tech Ed. Awesome. They, they do great work. And thank you for, for leading them and guiding them and letting them be a partner for, for our students. You know, one last question with CTE. You know, national models. You know, here we are and we're in the, the stages of trying to to create national models within the school district. We know that there's one program that's on the, the verge right now, <laughs> many to, to come after, and that's the Clay County Criminal Justice Program. You know, any, any thoughts about you know, what, what that means for our county and for that program as well? So the National Career Academy Coalition has 10 national standards of practice that they base an academy's progress on whenever you go for a model review. And Clay High School's Criminal Justice Academy, for many, many years, they have been very strategic about basing their academy structure around those 10 national standards awesome. of practice. And those things include their cohort scheduling. So as Alice mentioned earlier, that small group of students right. is it travels with that same group yeah, of teachers. And also their Criminal Justice Academy teachers, they meet on a weekly basis, either in person or through email. To figure out how they're going to um, provide interventions for those students and or um, work on curriculum that they can integrate. So some interesting things that I've seen from the Criminal Justice Academy is anytime they're doing a novel like To Kill a Mockingbird or Ju uh, Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet, they usually have a trial. And so they'll get guest speakers from the community to come in and talk to them about the prosecution and the defense or that kind of thing. And then they actually have a trial. And then so that's a way that they really infuse neat. that career theme yeah. into those academic courses. The science teachers, they'll do things like DNA and how that impacts a crime scene or the effects of alcohol on bodies. And then the social studies teachers, they'll look at why do we have laws? 
the histories of laws and different court cases that have impacted history. So you can see how those academic teachers work together with our CTE teachers to make those things more relevant for our students. Yeah, really neat. I mean, awesome, you know, connectivity, awesome collaborations, and it sounds like they're doing some, some really great things. I've, I've seen it myself, and, you know, walking those classrooms with each of you, and, uh, you know, hats off to them, and uh, we'll support them along the way. Well, Anything else that you want to add about CTE? Actually, there is. Oh, I, did okay. want, I did want to talk about community partnerships uh, okay, and right. ways that different business partners can get involved. Right. A lot of people, they see um, companies like Vistar right. that come in, like we're adding our fourth Vistar yeah. um, you, Academy Vistar. Um, to Clay High School this year. And they might be thinking, man, you know, I'm not a big company like right. Vistar. But what we really need is people's time. And oftentimes, um, it might be serving on advisory boards. We have 17 advisory boards that advise all of our current tech ed programs. Um, their purpose to, is, is to advise, assist, and advocate for CTE. Right. And so they help us with curriculum, um, maybe bringing in other guest speakers and different things like that. Um, they can also be mock job interviewers. They can judge contests. They can provide technical assistance for our teachers. Um, of the most relevant things that are going on in the industry. And so um, there's a lot of things that business partners can come alongside of us and do to help us provide those real world experiences for our students. Yeah, awesome. So if you're out there, you want to be a part of this process and then developing our learners, we're here for you. We have our hand extended and we love for you to lock arms with us and really to help our students. Last, uh, la you know, last question of the day, you know, we were going to talk about the math adoption process. However, we've had some recent news in the last 24 hours about the math adoption process. So, Mr. Connor was fortunate to be on that, that call uh, yesterday, and um, tell us about what kind of happened on that call. So, and this is hot off the press, I'm sorry. So, this is, <laughs> you know, you, you see it first. So, recently, uh, the governor just uh, released an executive order about the abolishment of Common Core. Okay. And so, in that... Thank you, um, Governor. Absolutely. <laughs> so in that, we're going to be rewriting standards over the next two years. So for the next two years, the standards and the way we calculate school grade and the assessments that we use for accountability will remain the same. Okay. Then after two years, Good. we'll see where, what progress we made in revising those standards. So the Governor and the DOE have, they've created uh, an, a new timeline for the math adoption. Okay. So actually, we pushed up CTE, so we'll be looking at yeah. adopting CTE materials next year along with rolling. Right, language. they're happy campers yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> so fitting. Uh, we flip. We were going to adopt language arts next year, right. so it'll go CTE, language arts, and then math. math. And so what we'll be doing as far as what does that mean for us in the county? We're going to continue down the path that we're currently on. We see an upward trend in our data with math, uh, and we feel that the resources that are available to our teachers are working, and we're going to continue to look at that. And then if we do understand that there may be some gaps that we, we need to fill along the way. So we'll be established, we'll be engaging teachers, we'll be engaging administrators to look at what are our needs, what's working, and uh, we'll continue to look forward to what the DOE says about our funding with instructional materials. Uh, we still have that question mark. Sure. What will our funding look like this year? Right. So uh, more to come on that, but that's where we're headed with the adoption process. Thank you so very much. Uh, you know, for, from our standpoint, for teachers, if you're watching, community members, our math will remain the same as it relates to curriculum. We may look to, to work with teachers in certain areas and grade levels to identify if supplement materials need to be added in order to enrich the, enrich the experiences within our classrooms, but more to come as we learn more from the Department of Education. Thank you all so very much for being here today. Uh, awesome conversation uh, as we see a continued upward trend in graduation and CTE and industry certifications and our kids being post-secondary ready to, to transition. So. Again, my name is Addison Davis, Superintendent of Schools, Lake County District Schools. Thank you and see you soon.